Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Mary Geisman, and Deborah Taylor over here and I are co-coordinators of the newly formed chapter of Unitarian Universalists for Justice in the Middle East and All Souls Church here. And we're the co-sponsors of this evening's event with Peace and Justice Task Force, where Linda Russo is the co-chair, and she's sitting back there at the sign-in table. We're very pleased tonight to be hosting Ian Burnett from Berlin in the West Bank, uh, Palestine, I should say, the West Bank. Uh, village where he is the leader of the nonviolent resistance against the occupation there. I am Ian Bernard, the head of the Popular Committee against the Wall and Settlement in Belayim, and also a member in Steering Committee in West Bank, leading the nonviolent resistance against the occupation. So here I want to talk today about our nonviolent struggle in West Bank and Palestinian nonviolent struggle. You know today what happened in Gaza just in a week. The Israelis bombed Gaza before the elections and it's happened every time. When they have elections, they kill more Palestinians. So if Netanyahu kill more Palestinians, he will be well. I think this is the suffering of the Palestinian people. Destroyed lands, destroyed the life of the Palestinian to build a apartheid state. And here I want to talk about the nonviolent resistance and to take my village as an example of the nonviolent resistance in West Bank. You know the nonviolent resistance, it doesn't start in Belay village or in Ali. We have the nonviolent resistance from 1936 against the British occupation and it was six months intifada for six months against the British occupation 1987 started the first intifada and also it was non-violent intifada so always the violent coming from the Israelis army I remember at that time I was 15 years old. When I was 17, I'd been arrested for two years. And you didn't know how the situation that the prisoners live in it in that time. When they take me from my home at middle of the night, a big group of soldiers and I was just a child in the school. I lost my school also because of this. They take me to Dahriya jail and they put me in 21 days in bad situation. This is just an example of what they're doing against the prisoners when they arrested them. And I live this bad situation. The first day, they take, take all our clothes. And I remember in 1992, it was very cold in February and the snow in Palestine. So they put me outside in the cold all the day. At night, they take me to small room. Small room, it's not room. It's half and half meter. So I have to stand all the night. And why? They want me to sign on a paper. 
they write it in Hebrew language and I didn't know Hebrew and I didn't know what's in this paper. Still this situation 21 days after this I have to sign. So when they take me to the court I find that I am a member in Fatih party. I didn't know in that time what's Fatih party or other parties because you know all the Palestinian was going in the demonstrations and they didn't know anything about the parties. And we was children, just participate in the school demonstrations. And they said that I was throwing stones. They take me from my home at the middle of the night. I was sleeping. Maybe my dream was throwing stones. I didn't know. So I spent two years in the desert, in the Nakab jail. And that is they built this jail for the people who arrested them in the first intifada. And it's very bad jail. I find there 20,000 people in this jail. And most of them is the children. So in 2000, started the second intifada. And you know the Israelis attacked the cities and they destroyed everything for the Palestinian Authority in that time. 2003, they was knowing that the media and everybody looking what happened in the cities and in Palestinian area, so they started to build the apartheid wall. What they called it, security wall. So some villages before Milayin was fighting this wall, but nobody knew about them because all the media was just looking what happened in the cities and what the Israelis was killing everyday people and attack and demolish and everything. 2004, December, they started in Belain village. So Belain people, when they saw the bulldozer destroyed, there is olive trees and there is land, and most of the people is the farmers in Belain. Just I have a photo of Belain. You see here uh, Bil'ain area and the red line is the wall, the apartheid wall. Here is the settlements. So here you see a small line. This is Mitiyah It's built on Bil'ain land. And also Muda'in Aliyid, part of Muda'in Aliyid is on our land. And they started to build this settlement after 2003. And all these settlements in the area, Muda'in Elite and others, they started to build it after Oslo treatment. So now we have, just in Muda'in Elite, we have 50,000 people live there. In this area, they destroyed more than 1,000 olive trees. And as I told you, Bilain is, most of the people is the farmers. We have 1,800 people live in Bilain. The land of Bilain is 4,000 dunums. The Israelis confiscated 2,300 dunums from the land. About 60% from the land of the village. So from December, the people started a demonstration every day. In the beginning, it was every day. From morning at evening, trying to stop the bulldozers to destroy their life. Because they didn't have anything, just there is olive trees and this land they was planted in. February, until February, we organized ourselves because we didn't want the people to be tired and to stop. Because it's important to be continue this demonstration to have your success. February to, uh, 2005, we started our demonstration every Friday. And we used uh, the non-violent way in our struggle. So we put ourselves in the cage in front of the bulldozers, try to stop them, 
and it was early mon morning in other days, not any Friday. Friday is a demonstration after the prayer Friday. We put ourselves in cages, in barrels, we type ourselves in, in the olive trees. So, since eight years, until now, we have our demonstrations every Friday. Of course, every Friday we have international solidarity who participate with us in our demonstrations. We have Israelis activists every Friday who, are, who participate in our demonstrations. But in other side, we find a lot of violence from the Israeli soldiers. 17 of April 2009, they killed our friend Basim Abraham. And if you know Basim, you will love him. He was a peaceful man. Every time he was in the front, he was just talking with the soldiers when they shot him. He was just told the officer, stop shooting, you shoot our friend, an Israeli friend. And they shot him by tear gas canister in his chest. He died in the place. So when you, when you hear tear gas, you think that to keep a people away. In our village, they use it to kill people. So this kind of tear gas, we called it the black rocket. And they have to use it to broken things or to, uh, for 500 meters. In Belayim, they use it in 20 meters direct to the people. And we have a lot of people who was injured by this kind of tear gas and they have, still have problems at now in their spot. Many kinds of weapons they use against us. Some of them, we didn't know the names. 1st of January, 2011, they killed his sister, Jawahar Abra, in the same situation. It was also a demonstration on Friday, and by, the, by tear gas, and she's died in the hospital. We have 1,300 people was injured. At night, they try to break us by any way. So they use a lot of violence, kill people, arrested, uh, shoot everybody. And also at night, at night is terrible there. Big group of soldiers raid the village by foot. Look, look to this face of the soldier. Broken the doors, attack the homes, wake everybody from his sleeping. <coughs> Children, everybody. And I know this situation because they raid my home more than 12 times. And I saw the faces of my children. So I didn't know how the child feel when he saw a soldier with dogs, Cavalier's faces, big guns, wake him up from his sleeping. Six years old, five years old, so it's not easy for the children to understand this situation. My little daughter, Mayar, she smelled the tear gas when she was one month in the beginning. And she's now eight years, the same old of the world. When she was three years, the Israelis attacked my home, and she was crying. When they wake her up, she was crying. Her mother carry her, but the soldier still look to her face, to her eyes. He didn't keep her, uh, his eyes to look to her. She was scary and afraid. So what we can say to our children in the future? Just because we have hope, we continue. We have hope to end the occupation soon. In this night raids, they arrested 150 and most of them children, children 13, 14, 15 years old. And they was put them in jail between six to 18 months. They have to pay to the court also money, between four to 15,000 shekels to break us. Because they know that this way is break the Israeli army. And this way is break the law of the Israeli country. But after two years from our struggle, we started in another village. Nalin, Nalin village. In one year, in Nalin, they killed five. 
The first one, he was a child, 11 years old, because they didn't want this way to grow up. They started by a lot of violence in other village nearly. So I remember when they shot the child, Ahmed Musa, he was uh, 20 meters from the Jundi, and he know him from the soldier. He know that his child, and he's standing like other people in the demonstration. He shot him by life bullet in his head. And he saw his brain when it go out, and he didn't care, he just go back. So what's here do they have? When we go to, to put Ahmed Musa in the grave, they kill other one the same day. And after this, Nalim will continue the demonstrations. And they kill more three from Nalim. And there is still a lot of people, but we continue. We started in Nabi Saleh village after two years. And the Masara village, El Walaja, Kufa Kaddum. We have 20 places now in West Bank. Have every Friday demonstrations non violently. And also Tuesday or Wednesday, we have other action in the roads of the settlers. Yesterday it was closed for four roads in West Bank for the settlers. And we continue because we, have, we want our freedom. I want to show to you some footage, video, who can have more information about our struggle.
video, we show some of uh, our actions.
new idea to use in our demonstrations. This time it was against the second units around the village. Here is the direct action. It was this demonstration. It was uh, at the early morning before the bulldozers came to work.
What you see now, this happened in uh, Belain village. Belain is uh, 16 kilometer west of Ramallah city. Yeah, this um, protests have been going on for an amazing time and um, with amazing fortitude. Uh, what support do you get from the Palestinian Authority and what support do you see in the grassroots movement of the popular resistance committees in other areas such as Manistala or Afwani or other, other villages that are resisting? Yes. Yeah, time. Uh, the first question, the first part, is, uh, you know, we are uh, as a cruise rod, uh, route resistance. We didn't have contact with anybody, with any parties, with uh, no contacts with the BA. We didn't have support from the BA. Uh, sometimes we have uh, the leaders of the parties come and participate with us in our demonstrations, uh, but uh, there is no support from the BA. And if we want to go in demonstration area A, for example, they didn't let us go. And you know, after Oslo, we have uh, area A, area B, area C. So now these actions happened in area B and C. So the other uh, part of the question, you know, we have now uh, steering committee in West Bank and we have from each village we have one in this committee Nef Saleh, Na'aleen and others 20 places now and if we want to start a new place you know we going and we participate with them we give him a training and we give him our uh, ideas how we start and how to deal with the soldiers how to deal with the 
Israeli is activist with the international, so all these things. So we have contact with all the committees in uh, West Bank. How do the uh, people in the uh, popular committee feel about the uh, Palestinian government going to the UN to get uh, to, to get a better status? Uh, does it matter at all? You know, we are uh, simple people. We didn't care for the political, what they're doing. We are, as the farmers, as the people in the villages, we care just to see something on the ground. We heard many things before. We heard the, the speech of Obama in Cairo. Before Obama, we heard the speech of Bush and uh, before attack in Iraq. There is, you will have a state. But we didn't see anything on the ground. And also, when Abbas going to the, to the United Nations to have the state, we didn't see our state. We didn't have our people, our land. We are under the occupation. What's the mean of the state? So we have to resist to have our state. You mentioned the olive trees, and it's in the video also, the olive trees. But I find here in America, we don't understand why really the whole importance of the olive trees, what the olive trees, how many years of work they represent, and how, what they mean to the families that uh, own that land. Could you talk a little bit about yes. what the olive trees mean? You know, as uh, farmers in uh, Bilain and in other areas, in the villages, they plant the olive trees. And they have, they, they have there is life from this olive trees. So the olive trees is a symbol of the Palestinian. So when they approach 1,000 olive trees in the village, and it's for many farmers, for many families, the food for many families in the village, the, these families lost their job. Because one tree for the olive trees, it's get more than 80, 800 shekel in the year for the family. So the families was sell the olive tree uh, oil before the war and the settlement. Now, they have to buy it. And it's, I told you, it's a symbol of Palestinian. And this, uh, the Palestinian cannot plant anything other, because the olive trees didn't need water when uh, we planted. So we didn't take water and uh, put in the olive trees. But if you want to plant any, anything other, we need water, and we didn't have water. So for example, in my village, we have the water one time in the week. But in uh, the Palestinians have enough water to live, and to have the water 24 hours. But they still our water. By the build this wall, there is taking the aquifer of the water, it's still the water from the ground, and they give us a little bit from this water. So always they give the water to the settlement. And also they give us a little bit from the settlement. And they put the, uh, the key of the water inside of the settlement. Shibril mm. Mayyad. The, the meter, they, they, they control. So, yeah. We also, it's, the, the olive tree is very important in the Quran, you know, it's been mentioned over and over that it's our land, you know, it's the... So if uh, some child from the settlement come and close this gate, the people didn't have water. So this is the problem and this is the importance of the olive trees. I am tremendously impressed with the courage <clears throat> and the resistance that the people in the village show against horrible violence. And much of the violence that we see that the IDF perpetrates on the people is supported by the United States. So my question is, <clears throat> how important is it or how is it appreciated when international activists come to stand with you and 
And would it be welcome if American military veterans came as a group to stand with you? You know, that would that be something that would be welcomed? I'm, I'm from a, a group of uh, military veterans that are opposed to the occupation, and we're also opposed to the American support of Israel. Uh, the group is called Veterans for Peace. So I want to know if that would be something that would be welcome for us to come to stand with you in your resistance. كما تلاقي ربما المجموعة من الجيش اللي رفضوا الخدمة أو إنه بيقول إنه هل هو بيساعد إنه يسبيش من برا يعني بيخدمه هم الجيش وبيخدمه حلا تاني كجيش إنه يساعد كمان خدمة إنه الخارجيين يعني اللي بيجي مثلا زي كارتر هذا لا بيساعد معنويا. Okay. I think it's very important. The important thing. in our struggle to have international in our demonstrations for many reasons. First, the international and the Israeli activists who participate in the demonstration, they list the violence of the Israeli soldiers. So when they saw international, they scared. They document everything. You, you know, go back to Israel and doc they document things. And also, the international is our messengers outside. They can see by their own eyes what happened, and they send the message outside to their people. And also, in the demonstrations, when they was arrested one from our village, and they go to the court, they said he was throwing stones, for example. The cameras of the international, they show that he didn't was throwing stones. The evidence. Okay, in the court. So they help to release people from the jail. <laughs> so every time we welcome everybody to come and to participate with us. And we welcome everybody to come and to see what's happened there, not just in the demonstration. We have other groups coming in in other days to see and to look where, what is the security wall, what the Israelis say. So we have a group, for example, from the United States, they was coming before uh, three years, and uh, this group was refused to go to the army. And they came to participate in our village in Belay. Every Friday we have new people coming from outside, from Europe, from United States, from other places. And we have a lot of them was injured in the demonstration because the bullet didn't know if you are international or Palestinian or Israelis or... We have a lot of them was deported, arrested and deported them. So it's so important to be, and we have now, in each village we have international participate every Friday or every week in these demonstrations. You were asking me if the vets are the this, and, and I was just trying yeah, to... Yeah, we would like you. to come as a group of veterans to come to participate and the to be also the recognized the by the IDF yeah. as American military veterans. And yeah, I, it's, I think we it's, do uh, that here. it's right. a good idea, and you are, you are more than welcome. You mentioned um, about the recent attacks in the election. Can you go into a little more detail about why uh, these attacks occur around elections? Is that this operation has led and what's happening now? Obama, I'm making it. You mean uh, Israeli elections? Are you talking about American elections or Israeli? Israeli. You know, both. Well, both the Israeli yeah, elections both. are now, but the American mm -hmm. elections are. So you're talking about the American elections? Yeah, a little bit of both. Actually, I'm and Obama. Usually the same time. I, I'm just after Obama. Obama. You know, unless you have. And you mentioned earlier. No, that I I uh, I mentioned that because I know that the Israelis, before the elections, inside of the Israel, they do something against the Palestinians. 
So if you remember uh, before four years, there was the uh, attack of Gaza, and they killed 1,500 people before the election. I know who the all murdered now, and, and Netanyahu is coming back in. Now we have soon elections, so they have to attack Gaza. Because we thought that uh, as a Palestinian, that when the Israelis have the elections, and uh, they have the propaganda of the elections, they will kill more Palestinians to win in the in that elections. We saw, we see when we watch um, videos of Billy um, and the demonstrations. We see a lot of people holding their children and standing very bravely against the the Israeli army and they're holding their children. And in five broken cameras, some of that was explained when. Some people said that their children have to know from the beginning. Uh, they have to know what has to be done, and they have to be courageous from the beginning. And I just uh, wonder if you could talk a little bit about the children who grow up seeing the courage of their parents. So our children they didn't know <coughs> What's the the mean of the sea? They never go to the went to the sea to swim or to play or to they're playing by the rubber bullet. They find it in the demonstrations and here. They never go to Jerusalem. They never had the gardens to play in this gardens. They just know the faces of the soldiers, demonstrations, bombs, sound bombs at night. Uh, this is what they know. And we didn't want them to be scared every time. Because their dream in night is very bad. And I saw my children and my brother's children. They cannot sleep alone. They have to sleep with their fathers or because they have a bad dream. So because this we take him sometimes to demonstration or to the land or to the wall. To take the scare from them. You know, and to teach him 